Okay, today we're going to be looking at part two of our civil rights lesson on indicator 8.1. Uh, we are going to start with the learning objective questions. For this section, there are three of them that you need to know. Explain the differences in segregation in the North and the South. What were the political divides during the civil rights movement? And why did the women's rights movement take off during the civil rights movement? Let's look at North versus South as far as civil rights. And when we look at the North, we have something known as de facto segregation. Uh, whereas when we look at the South, we have something called de jure segregation. And what de facto segregation was in the North was that segregation was done uh, mainly because it was considered to be a way of life and that mainly it was done mainly in communities. Whereas in the South, the jure segregation was mainly uh, imposed by law. Um, now in the North, uh, again, it was mainly segregation was done by communities, but in the South, it was gonna be easier to confront segregation uh, through things such as boycotts, sit-ins, and uh, these marches that we've discussed earlier. Also in the North, we saw the emergence of black power with the black power movement. Uh, which we discussed earlier, this began to alienate the general public and it hurt Martin Luther King's civil disobedience push during that period. In the South, uh, Martin Luther King was able to use nonviolent actions to show unjust laws uh, as far as civil rights went. So those are the two sort of the two main differences uh, going on in both places involving civil rights. When we look at the political divides, we saw a couple of things going on during this period. Uh, in the South, you had a group known as the Dixiecrats. The Dixiecrats are considered to be Southern Democrats. Uh, they showed extreme op uh, they showed extreme opposites of uh, the Northern Democrats because, again, they favored uh, mainly racist ideas in a lot of cases. Uh, they supported the idea of states' rights and cultural preservation of the South. So those were the things that the Dixiecrats were actually uh, for. Now, because of the Dixiecrat philosophy, uh, there became a growing, a growing number of people who were going to get involved in the civil rights movement. And this is going to pave the way for what the Republicans are going to call the Southern strategy. Uh, and Richard Nixon would actually use that Southern strategy uh, to win the presidency in 1968. Now, the civil rights movement is also going to lead to women's rights as well. Um, women saw what was going on as far as the civil rights movement was going, and now they're going to see, see their opportunity uh, to actually do something as well. So a lot of the women participated in the civil rights movement, and it led to the formation of a group called the National Organization for Women. Uh, some key events that are going to occur during this period um, we had a book written known as The Feminine Myst Mystique, which was a book on suburban housewives. Uh, we're going to see the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which we discussed earlier, which outlawed gender discrimination. And then we're going to have the famous Supreme Court case of Roe versus Wade, which was a Supreme Court case which protected abortions under the privacy laws. And of course, Roe versus Wade is still a very controversial um, Supreme Court case even to this day. Uh, final thing is the Equal Rights Amendment, which was proposed um, to guarantee equal rights for women during this period as well. So that's going to pretty much do it for this indicator. Please make sure that you go back and you um, answer those learning objective questions. Uh, make sure that you're familiar with all the key terms, uh, the feminine mystique, what Roe versus Wade was, again, which made abortion legal. Um, go back and know who the Dix Dixiecrats were, understand the differences in segregation in the North versus the South, and then, again, answer these questions. Please write these questions down, put them on the end of your sheet, and um, make sure that you're familiar with them. Remember, we will be quizzing uh, tomorrow, so make sure that you are prepared for the quiz on 8-1, which means you need to know part one and part two. Okay, that's going to do it, and I will catch you guys on the next one.